uh, quickly bring in up everybody back up to speed what are the objectives of this uh, program is and why we big have decided to sort of mentor and, and adopt the final European round. It's twofold really. First of all, we would like to raise awareness and involve students in a transition towards a bioeconomy by asking them to help develop bio-based products and processes, supply technologies that can be integrated in current new circular value chains, or as we call them, value circles. But doing so by applying real-time issues, real issues and issues and problems that we can apply. And this is an opportunity for big members to provide these real-time issues where the students can um, apply their talents. Secondly, we offer an opportunity to integrate students and, and interact with the students in industry. And the participants in this program are final year students at the University of Applied Science and also final year students at research universities. The process is that we're inviting and we would like to involve all European Union member states and also associated countries to organize national events, national competitions so that we have national winners to participate at the European final. And the European final will be proceeding around two rounds. First, where all the teams are there presenting in front of an, a, jury, a panel of experts mostly academic, but also uh, those with both academic and industrial experience. And um, this will be a thorough Q&A session and a panel will decide on the top three that will proceed in the final round and the final round will be done in the big networking event like we're doing right now and the big industry members and big full members will decide on the winner. And we big will accompany this whole process with appropriate publication, communication and PR and social media, et cetera. In this year, we had, if you show the next slide, please, uh, Ella, we have 16 participating. Um, I'm showing them here in alphabetic order from Belgium with a project called Hair Cycle, converting hair to a biological fertilizer, a team from the University of Ghent, Finland with the project Zeopac, paper-based absorbance based on renewable resources from the University of Alto. Then from Greece, Citrion, redefining citrus waste by creating value from the National and Capodestrian University of Athens. In, from Portugal, the team Poseidon from the University of, uh, this is Leiden showing is not correct, this uh, university in the southern part of uh, Portugal. I will come up with a name later. Then it's from Spain, the Chito or Chito shell, taking advantage of shrimp shell lifespan, University of Valladolid. And from the Netherlands, Sucker Spheres, a sustainable alternative to plastic micro bees. University of Leiden combination with University of Groningen. I must tell you that each team has prepared a short video with assistance from an expert uh, company. The videos are available in the big website, both on the general, the open page of the member area, as well as in the PWG room, the programming working group room. And also the presentation slides will be made available and um, also the recorded final that is happening right now. Um, before I ask the chairman to announce who will be the three top uh, participants. Let me show you on the next slide who the panel of experts are for this year. The chairman is Kees de Gooyer, the same gentleman as last year. He is from the Netherlands, from the Teka E. Agri and Food. Then from uh, Greece will be Georg or George Sakaleris. He's also from the Czech Acad Academy of Sciences um, from Czech and Manfred Kirscher from Germany. He's the chairman of advisory board of CLIP Cluster and Kevin O'Connor from Ireland, UCD and Irish National Bioeconomy Research Center. Kevin is also the chairman of the scientific committee. You see there shown a number of the criteria that judges have applied and to arrive at the fourth rank one through six of the previous list of participants. And I'll be asking Case Ahoy now at this moment to step in and announce um, how that process went and who are the three finalists. Case, if you would. Yep. Yes. Thanks, Nello. Um, well, first of all, uh, you were there, uh, 
yesterday afternoon. I don't know what everybody else was doing yesterday afternoon, but we had a great time because the six uh, teams were of excellent uh, quality. And I'm, I'm quoting uh, a colleague jury member here. Um, we came to a number one, two, and three. However, we will uh, uh, present to you them in alphabetical order. So that will be Finland, uh, Greece, and the Netherlands of the six. Take us from here. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Case okay, so indeed, I participated in the whole session and I was also really impressed by the quality of the teams and the presentations, the, the business cases themselves. And it was, uh, it was also very nice to see the enthusiasm with which the teams participated. Um, now, if you uh, put up the next slide, please, Ella, the, we're going to ask um, the teams to participate. And after that, we will go into a voting procedure. So mind you that we will have now first the presentations and after each presentation, there will be an interactive part first. This is really a part of we included this year, built on the feedback last year. Last year, there was no opportunity. There was just a presentation and you went into voting. This time, there will be opportunity for Q&A after each presentation. And then after the third, you will be asked to cast a vote and you'll be asked to cast, and then Ben will take over at that moment. You'll be asked to cast one vote and we will then show you the results. Um, therefore, I would uh, now please invite the team from Finland to uh, come up and begin their presentation on zero pack paper-based absorbance based on renewable resources. Finland, please. Hi everyone, I'm Erfan from Zeopac team. Around one third of all food produced in the world is never eaten and fruits and vegetables go to waste more than other foods. Food safety and waste management persuade every society to follow the European Union strategies toward reducing the amount of waste generated as well as maximizing the recycling and reuse following low carbon economy. Almost half of the food waste generated by households are coming from fruit and vegetables. Spoilage of many fruits such as banana and apple are coming from ripening process as a result of releasing ethylene gas from fruit structure, bringing out the best flavor, texture, and even an appetizing smell. You should have many times seen banana gets brown, like what you see here. But have you ever thought about the reason behind that? Yes, this is because of ripening process. Every fruit has a certain level of ethylene production through its life cycle. This can be different for each fruit and more ethylene means faster ripening and more unpleasant side effects. So we should find a way to store fruits for a longer term. Most of us are students and probably go for a shopping in weekend. Imagine you buy a couple of banana, take one before placing the rest in the fruit bowl and then go on with your life. But after a couple of days, you might forget about what you had got. Then you see they look brown and not edible anymore. So you throw them away. But how about increasing their shelf life by giving them a safe place? To address these issues, we offer paper-based absorbent from renewable resources to prevent extreme food waste, as well as keeping fruit and vegetables fresh for a longer. Actually, the tricky part is how to slow down the ripening process and keep the ethylene far away from fruits. This is exactly our expertise. Our novel solution is based on conversion of recycled papers to produce value-added papers with high porosity and surface for addition of zeolite as a natural mineral into its structure that can efficiently absorb ethylene gas according to catalytic degradation approach. This paper-based absorbent can be used in supermarket to increase the supply chain from importer to retail trades. 
that can produce substantial cost saving and economic advantages for food retailers and food industries. Based on our studies and initial tests, our product has potential to increase the shelf life of fruits by 40%. In addition, using recycled paper as a bio-waste supports recycling of uh, large-scale industrial waste. Therefore, European policy based on bioeconomy and circular economy is followed. The cost effectiveness of our strategy is another advantage, where we only need a hand sheet maker and small refiners, plus some renewed pulps and zeolites. Our selected market is packaging, and it can help the productivity of packages where a small sheet can be placed inside of packages, although it's possible to be wrapped around the fruit. Let's contribute on the waste management by following the Zeopack idea. Join us in this journey to create a world with less food waste. Kitos for your attention. Thank you very much, Erfan. I presume that Kitos means thank you very much. Welcome, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your attention also. All right, thank you. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward if uh, any big member would like to start this interactive part with questions. Um, anyone, please? Yes, I see Matt from SAPI would like to ask a question. Matt, come in, please. Uh, good morning uh, to you and thank you for your presentation. Uh, it was very uh, inspiring and I'm very connected to the topic. My question would be, how do you safeguard uh, food security with recycled paper? Uh, in the end, uh, there were a lot of discussions about the use of recycled paper for food, uh, direct food contact. And this is more or less a matter of designing new food contact with recycled paper and additives. Hello, I am other member in this team. Actually, uh, our aim is to use the recycled papers that are free from any like chemicals and inks. They are not kind of a, a newspaper. They are not printed papers. So they are very clean papers. For instance, you can find this kind of a papers in uh, paper companies that uh, in the cutting age, uh, cutting process, you can see they lose a lot of papers uh, before that. So, and since we just need some small mat um, materials for producing these sheets, we can uh, find these kinds of sources very easily. Mm -hmm. So, our focus is to find the papers that uh, they are not printed. They don't have like any toxic chemicals. And since these kinds of fruits have peel and does not have any oil migration, uh, they can, these kinds of paper can be safe even if you contact with them. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have been contact with some companies and organization in Finland, and there are large sources of uh, paper that are pollutant from that inks and um, that kinds of issues with my team members just referred. This is why yesterday we, uh, we mentioned our first focus is on Finland since there are a lot of large uh, source of raw materials and after that we will go to the next step. Uh, thank you. Do you allow for follow-up question, Nello? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, my follow-up question would be if you limited the, the use of waste paper to a waste paper from, from paper plants and uh, unspoiled paper, then the, the price for that paper will be much higher than normal standard recycled paper. In your business case, uh, did you calculate with that higher price? Uh, actually, they are kind of recycled paper, but uh, they are a specific type of recycled paper. And uh, this um, this is why uh, the the cost would be cheaper, not that much uh, expensive. Yeah, and also in the pulp companies, for instance, they have like a low grade pulp quality, and actually these kinds of low, uh, which has very uh, low price, and this kind of paper, this kind of pulps are also uh, are suitable for our purpose. So the cheap recycled pulp or fibers are enough for us and we don't need to use like very high quality recycled papers or fibers. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. 
Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Team Finland. I yes, looking at the time, we're spot on with the time allotted for the first team. Thank you again. Thank you. We would like to now move on to the team from Greece. And the team from Greece has a business case on redefining waste from bitter orange. Hello. I would like to invite the team from Greece to come in and please remind yourself or be reminded that the slides will be moved on as you ask has agreed with you in advance. So you cannot move the slides yourself. If you do, we you may be thrown out by the system that is. So Greece, please come in. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, we can. OK, OK, so we proceed. Hello, everyone. We are the Citrion team, and we welcome you to our beautiful city, Athens. Next slide, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Our beautiful city deals with an unsolved problem every single year. More than 200,000 bitter orange trees are scattered all over the city. They can produce up to 40,000 tons of non-edible fruit that rot on the streets every year. Next slide, please. The problems that arise are too many. Bad smells, floods for, uh, from blocked sewage drainers and dearranged biological water refinement plants are just a few of those problems. The fruits cannot be fed to animals nor can be composted and are too expensive to be handled by municipal workers. To solve this problem, we have developed a multi-step strategy. One, to use current biotechnology and engineering to extract every substance of bitter oranges leaving zero waste. Two, use IT technology applications to engage citizens into bitter orange collection and create awareness. Three, optimize processing technologies to achieve high effectiveness and scalability. And four, finally, make our system adaptable to respond to multiple production scenarios and to handle herbal waste from other juicing industries around Athens as well. Next slide, please. Although bitter oranges can have the potential to produce more than 10 different products in its annual life cycle, we have focused mainly on two or three of them because of intense market demand. Uh, for example, a natural preservative for the cosmetic and food industry alternative to parabens, and a natural pesticide for organic agriculture and livestock raising uh, industries that is non-toxic to consumers. Next slide. We think zero waste and use well-established technology to guarantee scalability. Such technology exists and after extensive laboratory tests, a small pilot scale study has been done to assure implementation success. Our strategy is to separate bitter orange components like juice, the peels and seeds, and extract all ingredients available through multiple steps. In an ideal production scenario, we can start processing immature fruits that are five times smaller than the mature ones to continue to large mature fruits in order to handle the huge biomass. With our capacity, we can produce up to 15,000 tons of different ingredients that can return ideally 86 million euros based on true market prices. This applies to the full potential of the project. More realistic generated profits can be four to five times smaller. Next slide, please. And here's the fun part. Citizens will be highly engaged to collect the bitter oranges for us through a cool mobile game application that will also be an interactive platform for environmental awareness and training. Smart bins will be used for collection and the bonus point rewarding system will be used as a motivation, translating to selected shop and municipal discounts for users, just like banks do with credit cards. Next slide, please. Product, process and collection innovation are highly important for us but we have also managed to achieve the hardest goal, a triple dividend. With the Citrion project, we can help the environment, raise awareness, create jobs, prevent social and municipal discomfort, 
while creating profit for investors and stakeholders. Next slide. We can also approach 10 out of 17 goals for the United Nations for Sustainable Development and promote the European Green Deal. Next slide. Today, our goal was to present a monumentary project for our city and to prove that we can have huge practical societal and environmental impact. This is an applicable project that can also raise awareness. Next slide. Thank you so very much for your attention and we wish good luck to the other three teams. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Team Greece, for an excellent presentation, very interesting topic. Uh, while I'm looking forward for questions for this interaction with big members, at least one big member I'd like to hear and see coming forward, I would like to inform other students that Okay, looking forward. Um, is there any question from a big member wanting to step forward? And, um, I, I have a question. Hello. Yes, I recognize the voice of Kel Anderson from Food and Bio Cluster Denmark. And you know I, how I know my members. Go ahead, Kel. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, I'd just like to say, although you have some trouble with your, um, with your, um, uh, YouTube video or stream. I saw the video yesterday and it was it was great. I really recommend that everyone uh, have a look at it. Uh, thank you very page. much. Uh, and uh, I would like to just like to say that uh, thank you uh, for a very nice presentation. Congratulations on this very uh, interesting concept where you uh, where there's uh, some clear benefits both economic, social, and environmental. Um, uh, I am also very much interested in this uh, service model or reward model you have for the citizens mm -hmm. uh, because it is uh, very important that we start engaging citizens even more. And uh, I really would like to know how you would like to do this in practice. So you have this app that you showed, but how will you make this connection and reward system with the municipality and also local stores in the in the city mm -hmm. okay okay so if i get the question right you want to know how we connect the application to discounts for municipal uh, fees uh, etc yes so you, you so you hand in your oranges somewhere you get a reward you get some bonus points and you have to go to mm -hmm. a store but in between you know you have to uh, mm -hmm. you have to make some deals with the stores and the municipality Who's yes, going yes. to do all that practical work and how? <laughs> okay, here's how we have thought this plan uh, through. Um, through this process, uh, we, save the, we actually managed to shave uh, the municipal authorities' money from cleanup uh, and from environmental fines, because if the authorities don't treat this problem, uh, they will have to pay some fines to the government. So with this project, we actually save this money uh, and this can return to the citizens uh, through their own bills because citizens are actually the ones that pay uh, for this service, for the cleanup city. Uh, so we, if we manage to save this money, we can also return this uh, with subsidies uh, to the municipals as a company ourselves. Uh, that's how we have thought this uh, process through. And as for the shops, uh, we have thought of it as a um, regular, uh, regular uh, discounts for purchases over a certain threshold. For instance, uh, one can buy, one can have a discount of five euros, let's say, uh, depending on his performance and how much he deposits on our special smart bins. Uh, but he will have uh, to to make a purchase for. This is all under negotiation with the stores and the municipals on how to find the best formula uh, that uh, fits all citizens and uh, our partners. I hope I'm answering this question. Is there anything that is not clear to you that can I, I can explain? Uh, no, I know, but it, it, I think you 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 answered it as best as you could because I know it's a difficult one. So sorry about that. I have a short. Oh, no, it's okay. It's, it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a short follow-up question. So. Uh, you will have uh, processing of the citrus fruit. So, but this mm -hmm. will be season. So, you also have to invest in some equipment. Do we mm -hmm. have some on alternative uh, ways of also using this equipment 
during you know other uh, let's say seasons of the year uh well for other seasons you mean other products for other applications or for the same application throughout the year okay so let me just say this so you will get in some citrus fruits during the, mm -hmm. the fall i guess and and what will happen to the workers and 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 the equipment during uh -huh. the, the other seasons of the year okay okay through the year you mean okay uh we can use it all, actually. That's that's the scenario, the best case scenario we have thought of, uh, because you understand that this is a huge biomass uh, of citrus uh, seeds, and uh, we have estimated actually four to five months production, and uh, the rest is for marketing and uh, sales. Uh, and also, um, oh, sorry, let, let me let me just um, understand this fully. Uh, we can use this biomass by, uh, on the way we have described before, by, de by taking the small green uh, fruit, uh, by taking the small green fruit uh, at first, and then the mature fruit that are much larger to handle this biomass. And further throughout the year, we have thought of cooperating with other juicing companies around Athens that are accessible to us due to good infrastructure. I mean, we can transport um, the juice very easily and uh, we can use their uh, waste to continue our production apart from the waste uh, from the streets of Athens. Great, thank you. That's a very nice answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Kel, for this uh, interaction. This is what students love and so do we. Uh, we have two more, about two more minutes, and I see two more questions coming in. Uh, if you can answer these, or try to answer these uh, very shortly. One is, one is um, from Susan. Are you isolating pectin also in the process? Uh, no, there's not uh, a plan for this yet. Uh, we have considered a few ingredients that we could uh, advance in the future. Uh, pectin at the moment is not one of them. Uh, because it's very difficult to process it, um, but we are free to R&D and uh, invest in innovation and see possible ways to use this in the future. At the moment, no, it's not very applicable. Okay, that's very clear. And a final one here is uh, from Raffaele from PNG. Where are the oranges collected? Uh, do you mean around the city? Yes, or, or anywhere, yeah. Okay, our primary plan is uh, for the city of Athens and uh, in cooperation with the recycling company, we have decided to put uh, specific smart bins scattered around the city, but in high density regions. That means that uh, there are crucial points where there are more bitter oranges than in other places and that, and we're planning to put bins there to collect, for, to be easier for the people to collect the, the fruit and put it in specific points. And uh, the recycling company uh, takes them from there and uh, is responsible for the rest of the transporting. I okay. Hope, okay. I hope I understand this question clearly. Yes, I, yes, this, 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 this was clear. Thank you very much. We can use that uh, excellently, yes. So thank you, Greece. Also today, a very uh, enthusiastic presentation. Thank you very much. Very good, thank you. I would like to move on. We're spot on time with the team from the Netherlands. And the team from the Netherlands has this uh, project or a business case called Sucker Spheres, Sustainable Alternative to Plastic Microbeads. I would like to invite the team from the Netherlands to come in and start your presentation. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, well, next slide, please, actually, already. Um, yeah, I would like to start uh, actually by asking you how often do you consider the amount of sunscreen you use? Or how about just any cosmetic product, laundry detergent or food supplement? But probably not often, right? Well, perhaps you would if you knew that each of these products is filled with up to 100 trillion tiny plastic balls called microbeads. And after you've safely tanned in the sun, these plastic balls are washed off and released into the environment, accumulating in animals and humans. And in this way, over 300,000 tons of microbeads are polluted within Europe every year. 
Now this needs to edit. And therefore we would like to present our solution, Saccharospheres. Next slide, please. And we propose to produce microbeads from the protein saccharin. And contrary to pervasive microplastics, uh, this protein is easily degraded in the environment. And furthermore, saccharin can be produced sustainably using bacteria without the need for large quantities of toxic chemicals, such as in the processing of plastic microbeads. Next slide, please. And although saccharin is easily degraded in the environment by ubiquitous organic proteases present all around us, and this will actually not be a problem for saccharosphere product shelf lives. And this is simply because cosmetic products are sterile and thereby do not contain any proteases, making it perfect for our product. Yet, despite these amazing environmental facts, you may ask, why would profit-driven cosmetic companies abandon their current products for saccharosphere? Well, quite simply, because they will need us. Next slide, please. Because six countries in the European Union have already banned plastic microbeads in rinse off cosmetics. And the European Union is currently drafting a law that will ban all use of plastic microbeads. And although companies have found alternatives to plastic microbeads in rinse off cosmetics, such as shampoo in the form of silica beads, this solution is not applicable to the many applications of microbeads in non rinse off cosmetics and personal care products, where microbeads in shampoo often simply serve as a cheap bottle filter, filler. And next slide, please. The microbeads in, for example, sunscreen are vital for the consistent spread on the skin of the UV absorbing particles and to prevent local exposure to dangerous UV radiation. And current alternatives are simply not good enough to replace these plastic microbeads. But because spheres have this plastic-like moldability and elasticity, they are the perfect solution to a market threatened by looming bans without suitable alternatives. So you may ask what gives the protein saccharin these amazing properties? The next slide, please. A saccharin is a protein originating from the sucker ring teeth of squid. And these squid teeth need to be incredibly strong while also being flexible. And this has driven evolution to create saccharin's incredible properties. And furthermore, because saccharin is a protein, it can be mass produced sustainably by the already widely adopted method in the industry of heterologous production in E. coli bacteria. Next slide, please. And this can be performed in existing industry scale bioreactors using agricultural waste as a foodstock for our bacteria. And afterwards, the bacteria can simply be lysed and have their intracellular saccharin contents isolated. And now, Using a mixture of salts, which cause a pH drop, the saccharin protein can actually self-assemble itself into nanoparticles that can be used as microbeads, circumventing complex production processes needed. And next slide, please. With spheres, uh, we plan to enter the market for microbeads in non rinse of cosmetics, which has a value of 202 million US dollars worldwide, with an annual expected growth exceeding 8%. And we intend to patent the Sacrosphere's product and production process and propose to use these patents to start a joint venture uh, with an experienced chemical company, which for instance, we are thinking of Wecker, and maybe a large cosmetic company or other large investor for financing. And now Wecker could provide us with their experience in the mass production of protein and maybe provide us access to their already existing industry scale bioreactors, saving a lot of startup costs. And together with uh, a lot other large investors, such as uh, a cosmetic company, they could provide us the investment, um, which in total we expect to need $26 million needed for initial sacrosphere production. And if a, co a cosmetic company would want to work with us, they could become the first and at the start exclusive cosmetic company to overcome the looming ban on plastic microbeads. And we expect this joint venture to provide a return of investment within seven years. Next slide, please. Hereby, we believe sucker spheres will prevent the yearly European microplastic pollution of 300,000 tons, while providing a suitable alternative to vital plastic microbeads for an industry in need of this. Next slide, please. We are sucker spheres, and we are fighting for a sustainable future. Thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to answering your questions. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Netherlands team, the Dutch team, Lawrence, and I'm looking 
immediately to questions from our members. I'm sure that members would like to interact with you on this excellent business case. Anybody from big members present? I see there's a question in the q and I think, from Hans Kelken. Yes, ah, can you see the question too? Yeah, I can also read it out loud if you want. Excellent, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, uh, well, so, let, uh, me, let, me, yeah, let me read it to you. This is from okay. Hans Kirken, a member of uh, Big, Big Board uh, for Sequin. Seems to be an interesting solution. Are you unique? And how may competing microbeats are, how many are, I believe uh, he's want to say, are out there? Did you already file a product patent application or only about a possible protein process? Yeah, so um, we are uh, unique in the sense of that we have microbeads that actually have these plastic-like properties. Uh, currently used alternatives are, for example, a silica beads, which are essentially sort of really tiny glass balls. These are already being used in shampoo bottles. Um, but all current alternatives that are being used right now are either not sustainable, uh, so they will still have very long lifetimes in nature, or they don't have the properties needed to uh, replace microbeads in products such as sunscreen and some other cosmetic and personal care products. Um, so in that sense, we would be unique. Um, and then the second, for the second part of your question, we've currently not yet filed uh, our patent, but we would like to file a patent later for when we have the final design of our Suckersphere product and we have the final characteristics. And we would also like to patent the production process. I hope this answers your question. Yes, thank you very much. I believe I'm answering for Hans, but uh, Hans, is this answering your question? Undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Anybody else from the big members present? There's a question in the chat, uh, Nilo. Um, just looking at the chat now. Yes, Erwin Lepoudre. Yes, a question now for the Dutch team. What would be the difference with PHA microbeads? Ah, oh, very good question. Uh, I'm afraid, afraid I'm not the expert from our team, um, but what I understood, we did look at these PHA microbeads, uh, was that um, for some applications, they also had problems with the properties, but the main problem with PHA microbeads, for as far as I understood, that they still had a very long um, uh, time to break up in uh, nature, actually not as long as plastic microbeads. Um, and that is, could still pose a problem, uh, for instance, because these uh, microbeads are too small to filter from our drinking water. So we would all be consuming them still. Um, and our product would be broken down in nature actually within hours or at, le at the most days. Okay. Thank you very much. I have another question for you. I probably you can see it also, but let me read it for the other participants. Thank you. This one comes from Tatjana Schwaber from the CLIP cluster in Germany. Do you foresee any issue with allergy potential of a seafood protein? How will consumers consider the heterogeneous or heterologous, heterologous production of a squid protein in E. coli in their natural cosmetics? Yeah, so two very good questions, actually. Um, in terms of safety, um, there's been already a lot of research um, into safety, at least on uh, cell culture models um, to see, and then no toxicity was observed. Um, I do think allergies are a very important point, And we were actually already planning a future research if we wanted to use this um, to see if indeed allergies could become a problem uh, in the case of this protein. Fortunately, however, um, this protein is quite similar to keratin, uh, which is also in our skin and a lot of other products. Um, and it's not like a completely distinct protein from which we are already accustomed to being exposed to. So we don't necessarily expect that many allergies, but it definitely has to be tested. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot the second part of the question. Do you, do you see it? Uh, no, I don't see it right now. So if you could repeat, it would be very nice. Uh, I don't see it myself either, but I, it was referring to E. coli, uh, if I see uh... Ah, yeah, what, what the customers would think of this production method. Right. Um, I think it is indeed always a hard uh, problem, a difficult problem with um, 
GMO production, essentially. Um, we are hoping that customers would be okay with this as the final product will be completely GMO free. Uh, the saccharin will be completely unaltered protein um, and all E. coli particles will be completely filtered out. So it will be a natural uh, product in the end in that sense. Um, and we're hoping because other proteins are already being produced these days uh, in such a fashion that this protein will also be accepted especially because of the sustainable advantages, of course, compared to plastic microbes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I see that another member from Procter & Gamble was willing to ask you a question, but I get a message that apparently his mic is not working. Oh, that's uh, important. Maybe, uh, maybe you can put your question in the chat, Raffaele, that, uh, we, that I can read it. In the meantime, um, I see another question come in here. Materials from biotechnology are following ECHA still plastics. Can you comment on this if you understand the question? I'm sorry, I personally don't understand the question immediately. Um, what exactly is ECHA? ECHA is a European, uh, I believe, agency for. Uh, for chemical products and, uh, and, and apparently, if I understand Erwin's question correctly, materials from biotechnology are following the, the rules for ECHA as for plastics. Um, ah, so I, I'm not that sure I understand. Be a problem. Yeah, um, Erwin, if you hear me, can you please elaborate on your question a bit because I, I don't fully understand it. In the meantime, I see a question coming in from Raffaele from PNG, did the team test the beads in any finished product prototype and did the team benchmark performance versus existing technologies? Uh, no, I'm afraid we are still in that sense in an earlier research state. So we are currently working uh, on saccharin production uh, and we do know that they can, that we can use them to self-assemble in nanoparticles. Um, but unfortunately, Corona has completely stopped our research um, already since March, especially since we are students. We have to prioritize in the lab, but we definitely intend to do this research, uh, hopefully soon once we are allowed uh, full time in the lab again. Okay, excellent. I will have to leave it at this, uh, looking at the time, um, and we need well, to proceed much. with the voting. Thank you very much, Dutch team, Leiden and Groningen. Um, to be honest to all the teams, I need to inform you the team from Portugal that participated yesterday was the team from the University of Beira Interior from Covilia. Then we are complete. Now, if you can uh, put on back the slide, Ella, on the procedures for today, we are now moving on to the voting. And I'm going to ask Ben to step in, be sure that the only ones who are allowed and invited to vote our big members, students who are in this session are not allowed to vote. And uh, we will show you the results right after the vote. Ben, go ahead. So hi everyone, you can see the poll on your screen now. So please start voting. We have a minute for the vote. One vote per participant. And members of big, you can use any criterion that you feel is appropriate, but we're looking for, or you may consider potential for our industry. Does it help us create the impacts that we're after? Is it uh, sustainable? Especially does it contribute to society? Because this is one of the things that we're pursuing with our new vision or with our vision 2050, the circular by society. So go ahead, you have a minute to do so. And the winner is, here we go. And if things go right, yes, here we go. The winning team is Greece with the project Citrion. If uh, I, you know, I would love to hear a wow or a, some sort of a scream from Greece. Okay, now we hear Athens, excellent. You can't <laughs> imagine the wow happening right now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we can see you. Excellent. Thank you very much for uh, yes. all, 
three members there. So uh, very good. Um, I'm sure we can't come over and, and eat this the, the citrus uh, because they are not edible, but uh, I'm sure one of these days we're gonna enjoy a good Greece a Greek dinner and, uh, and drink. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. And you see the members of BIC will see if they remember the prize for the first winner is um, uh, 5,000 euro. Um, and the second prize will be 2,500 euro. And the third prize will be 1,000 uh, euro. Um, I would like to, before we conclude, if the, Greece, the Greek team, if you would like to say any other word except from showing us your heart and thank you, if you would like to say anything else, please go ahead now. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity. We're very happy to, to be here and, of course, to get the first prize. We didn't expect this, uh, not even in our dreams when we started this. So thank you very much. And we hope that with your encouragement, we can make this happen. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. Now, before wrapping up the session, thank you again, uh, uh, Greece. Um, Ella, could you put up my final slide? I would like to charge ourselves with uh, a, a challenge for next year. Next steps here. For 2021 next year, I would like to charge ourselves big and we aim for at least 50% of the EU27 and associated countries to participate on a national basis or assign a student team to participate in the European final as a first step, which is also possible. And in this process, we are looking to seek the assistance from big members, associate members, industry members, but also in particular the big education team and also the state's representatives group, the scientific committee, all to participate because the potential is so huge, but we really are lo really looking forward to a quantum step forward and move on from six to 10, but you know, I'm charging for 50% to participate at least on a national level. Because this success will help us decide on the further steps, the next steps of uh, this, this program. So looking forward to your participation and support so that we can keep this program in our uh, programs in the years to come. Thank you um, very much. And the only thing I would like to um, mention is that the in second position was the team from the Netherlands. And therefore, third position, the team from Finland. And before concluding, can I ask the chairman of the jury, Case the Hoyer, Case, if you're still there, do you also have some closing remarks, Case? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm still here, definitely. And uh, it's good to, to see the enthusiasm uh, back again. So I thank you for that. Um, I, I'm curious about how many people actually casted a vote because Ben said 18 uh, as a last statement. So. And we will evaluate later on, Nalo. So uh, I wish you uh, an excellent conference for the rest of the day. Thank you. Okay. Thank you uh, very much, Case. And we will also proceed with evaluating the process from our perspective and, uh, and move on. All right. So thanks a lot for the, the process presentations and congratulations to, to the winners.